Okay, so this is going to be a brief interlude in the sequences and series unit to talk about Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem. Uh, in this video, we're going to investigate Pascal's triangle and use it to expand binomials. All right, so what is Pascal's triangle? Well, Pascal's triangle is a special arrangement of numbers in a triangular shape uh, that has a very specific pattern. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that pattern very briefly here. Uh, I've written it off to the side. Each number is the sum of the two numbers above it. So let's pick on two, for instance. If I look at this two, you can see that if I add the two numbers directly above it, I get the value two. That works for any, any number in this triangle. So for instance, three, if I add one and two, I'll get three. If I add three and three, I get six. Uh, four and six, I get 10. And this pattern continues for forever, indefinitely. A uh, couple of key points about Pascal's triangle. This first row with just a one in it, that is called row zero. Okay, that's very important um, once we start using this and applying it to binomials. Uh, if you forget that this is row zero, you're gonna experience disastrous results. Likewise, this is diagonal zero. Uh, we start with diagonal zero. Diagonal one is where you start seeing the, the, the values increase by one each time. Uh, you'll notice that there are ones along the side of the triangle. That's another key feature. So when you're, if you're being asked to draw this, you always start with a one and then you write two ones for row one. And then you can continue by writing ones in the diagonals as you go along. And then you can develop the inside of the triangle using that property that each number is the sum of the two numbers above it. Okay, so that's just a brief introduction of Pascal's triangle. Uh, just as a warm up before we start uh, applying Pascal's triangle, I just want to remind you of this concept of FOIL that we can use to expand binomials. So right here I've got x plus y squared. I want you to use FOIL to expand this. Using, using FOIL we would, we would just write x plus y times x plus y. That's what this says, x plus y squared. We've got two x plus y's being multiplied. And remember FOIL tells us that we can multiply the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last terms. That's our FOIL acronym. Okay, so when I do that, I would end up with this expression here, x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared. I can collect my xy's in the middle, and I will get this expression here. I promise this is relevant to Pascal's triangle, and the relevancy will certainly blow your mind. And that is a promise. So looking at part B here, you've seen, you can see I've increased the exponent by one. That does increase the difficulty a little bit. I'm multiplying three binomials. So what I could do here is just FOIL two of them. I could just FOIL the, these two here, for instance, and then I could just distribute the third bracket, set of brackets into my, my FOILed expansion. So I've already done this in part A. So I've just kind of copied and pasted my answer from part A uh, for, for this FOILing process. Okay, the next thing that I would do would, would then be to multiply my x into the brackets by each term and likewise with the y. So you can see that that is a pretty tiresome process. I end up with a very intense expression here. Collecting my like terms and simplifying, I would end up with this expression here. Okay, so what if I asked you to expand this binomial, x plus y to the power of 47? This would take you 25 years and we don't have time for that in this video lesson. So I'm not going to do that by hand. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this concept of expanding binomials to Pascal's triangle. So to demonstrate that connection, what I'm going to do is just expand a plus b to the power of zero, and I'm going to gradually increase my exponent. And I'm just going to talk about a pattern that you see here. And as it turns out, there's a pretty intense connection to Pascal's triangle. I'm going to bring up Pascal's triangle here just to remind you of what it looks like. You can see that once I expand a plus b to the power of zero, we know anything to the power of zero is one. Uh, if we have a plus b to the power of 1, we'd end up with just 1a plus 1b. a plus b squared, we'd end up with this expression, which we just saw. And likewise for a plus b to the power of 3. Now the interesting thing here, if you compare the coefficients in front of the variable of each term, you can see that those coefficients match up exactly to the values in Pascal's triangle. Now that is not a coincidence. This will happen for every single uh, expansion that you do as you increase your exponents. Okay, if I did a plus b to the power of 5, you can bet that we would see our coefficients matching up to this row in Pascal's triangle. Now it's very important to remember that a, that this is row 0, right? So row 0 would be your exponent 0. That'll tell you the coefficient of your term. We only have one term, it's 1. 
right? So a plus b to the power of one, that tells us to look at row one and we can pick out our coefficients from Pascal's triangle. Likewise, for a plus b squared, we pick out row two and those will be our coefficients. And this will work every single time. So you're thinking, great, that helps you with your coefficients. But what about all this mess that we got in, in the middle when we did our foiling process? We got a whole bunch of variables being multiplied and we ended up with a whole bunch of ugly terms. Well, it turns out there is a pattern that will help you determine how to write the exponents on your variables as well. And the pattern is the a value, so the first term, has an exponent that starts at the highest possible value for that exponent. So let's pick on a plus b squared here. The highest possible exponent I could get would be a squared. At most, I'm multiplying a times a. So I'd start with a squared. And you can see I gradually work my way down until I have a to the power of zero. I don't have a to the power of zero here. I didn't write it because a to the power of zero is one. But for instance, if we look at a plus b cubed, I start with a to the three, a to the two, a to the one, a to the zero. You can see I work my way down. So that's the pattern for the a values or the first term. The second term starts at zero and works its way up to the largest possible exponent. So likewise for this one, b to the power of three at most, I'm multiplying b times itself three times. So I'm gonna start at zero and work my way up to b to the power of three. So you can imagine applying this to a situation like x plus y to the 47. We just have to write out the Pascal's triangle to the 47th row, write out our coefficients and use this pattern and we could essentially save ourselves, well, it would still take a lot of time, but it would not take as long as if we did it by hand. So let's look at a couple examples of this. All right, so I've got a plus b to the power of seven. So what you could do is write this out a plus b times a plus b times a plus b seven times and do it by hand, but that would take you a long time. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna apply Pascal's triangle here. I don't have row seven, but I'm gonna just ask that you believe that these would be the coefficients uh, that correspond to row seven of Pascal's triangle. So I, I, whenever I do these problems, I always sort of write out the coefficients first and I leave some space and I always go back and do the variable portion afterwards. So that's what I've done here. Uh, and I've separated them all by plus signs. Uh, so next I'm gonna look at the variables and the exponents. So you recall that I said you're gonna start with a and the, the value of the exponent on a will be seven. We're gonna start with the highest possible exponent. Okay, and we're gonna work our way down as we work from left to right in our, in our ex expansion. Okay, so you can see I'm decreasing until I reach a to the power of zero. Okay, but for b, I'm gonna start at the far end here. I like to work my way backwards. I'm gonna start with b to the power of seven, and you can see that I work my way downwards from seven all the way back to zero. Okay, you could also start at the beginning and work your way from zero up to seven, it's up to you. All right, so that's expanding. Uh, this question should really say expand and simplify. I'm gonna just quickly change that. Um, you know, it's a good idea to, to simplify your expansion as well. You know, b to the power of zero and, and this one here, these are kind of a redundant. Uh, remember, b to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is one, right? So we don't really need to write that. We don't really need to write this one. This b to the power of one, that's not really necessary. So you're just gonna kind of scan through your, your expansion and you're just gonna kind of simplify uh, anything that you can you can possibly get rid of. Okay, you wanna condense that expression as much as possible. And you can see I've done that here. Okay, so that was sort of a, just a simple application of Pascal's triangle. Uh, this was literally di directly what we just did, a plus b to the power of some exponent. But what I wanna do now is I wanna show you how this changes once we change what's inside our brackets. So I've changed this to b, or sorry, to m minus n. These variables don't really matter, but what does matter is that I've changed the sign inside. So this sign is, is gonna kind of throw a wrench in the gears here a little bit, but that's not a problem, we'll talk about it. So same thing, this tells us we're raising it to the power of four. We're gonna count down row zero, one, two, three, four. These would be my coefficients that I'm, that I'm dealing with right here, one, four, six, four, one. So I start by writing those out. I just put plus signs for now, and I'm gonna just write out the, the variable portion and the exponent in a similar way to what I did in the previous example. So I'm gonna start with m to the power of four, and I'm gonna work my way down as I move from left to right. You can see I'm gradually working my way down to zero. And with the n, I'm going to start at the far right with a power of four, and I'm gonna work my way to the left until I reach zero. Now you gotta be careful here because in the previous example, we had a positive b, so we just wrote b, 
In this example, we have minus n. That minus is going to be attached to this n. We're going to call that negative n as a term. So when we, when we do our expansion, we have to account for that by putting it in brackets and raising the entire thing to the power of 4, to the power of 3, and so on, until we work our way back to 0. Now you're thinking, okay, well, how does that how does that change our expression? Well, for the first term, this one and anything to the power of zero, those guys don't really matter. So you know we're going to cancel those out and just have m to the power of four. But you can picture raising a negative number to an odd power. That's going to turn this into a negative term. So what I would have here is four m cubed times negative n. So because I'm multiplying by negative n, I could just change my positive to a negative and summarize that term in this way. This would be this, the most simplified version of this term. Okay, but let's take a look at the next term. This time I'm squaring a negative. Well, anytime I take a negative and multiply by a negative, I end up with a positive. So we could summarize this term as saying it's going to be 6m squared times n squared, right? Our negative n squared is just n squared, so we still have, we have a positive here. So you might start seeing there's a pattern here. I'm oscillating between positive, negative, positive. And you can bet that in the next term, the same thing happens. Negative n to the power of 3. Well, that's negative n to the power of 3. So I could just simplify this term by saying negative m times, or sorry, negative 4m times n to the power of 3. And I'm going to get rid of that 1 because I'm trying to clean up my expression here. And likewise for the last term, the 1, the m to the power of 0 don't really count for us negative n to the power of 4 should just be n to the power of 4. Okay, so make sure that you're, you're, you're uh, up to date on your exponents. Raising anything to the power of, uh, of, a, of a positive, or of a whole, excuse me, <laughs> raising anything to the power of an even exponent will always give you a positive number, but if you've got a negative base and you're raising the power of, a, of an odd exponent, you will end up with a negative number. Okay, and that's got to be reflected in your expansion. All right, so last example, definitely a little bit uh, more uh, more intense than the previous even. Um, you can see I've changed out my m for a 2x, and so now I've got a numerical coefficient attached to my variable, and I've done away with the, 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 the second variable entirely, and I've just called it the number one. Okay, let's see how this affects our expansion. So again, we're gonna take this first guy, and we're gonna we're we're just gonna put that in brackets and raise it to the power of our of our decreasing exponents, just like we did with m and a. But first, let's talk about our coefficients. Right, we're we're dealing with row five here, so we're gonna just write our coefficients out. And you can see that I've taken that that first term and I put it in brackets and I'm raising it to the power of five, just like I did with a and m, but this time I have two x. So it's important that I put that in brackets, just like I did with this negative n in the previous example. Okay, and I'm gonna systematically work my way down. Uh, you can see that I've, I've put 2x to the power of four in brackets, uh, 2x in brackets to the power of three, and, and likewise as I move uh, to the right. Okay, so I've worked my way over to 2x to the power of zero. I'm gonna do the same thing with my one, but I'm gonna work backwards from five, and I'm gonna decrease as I move to the left. Okay, so there should really be no surprises there. The only difference here is we have a numerical value that we're also raising to the power of an exponent. This is where some people get confused. You gotta remember that this exponent applies to everything inside the brackets, right? Each of these exponents. So you're gonna have a situation, in particular this term here, we're gonna have two to the power of four, and then we also have to multiply by five. Don't forget bed mass here. Your exponents have to go first. Don't just simply multiply by five, five times two, then raise it to the power of four. Okay, you're gonna get a skewed answer. Uh, so just be very, very careful here. Don't forget any of your, your, your studies of math at, up, up until this point. Everything still applies. Bed mass still applies. So let's simplify. All right, so this one does not really carry any weight. Neither does one to the power of zero. So our first term, we could just simplify by considering two to the power of five. We know that that's 32. And then we're going to multiply by x to the power of five. Okay, and our, our one term is now gone. Our second term, we're going to do two to the power of four and then multiply by five. So we'll end up with 80, and we still have x to the power of four, right? Remember that one squared is just one, so that doesn't really carry any weight for us. So that's not in our final expression. Our, our third term, same thing. We're gonna do two to the power of three, so that should be eight, and then we're gonna multiply by 10 to get 80. The one squared is gone, and you can see that I'm gonna continue this in, in this fashion as I move from left to right. Okay, in your final term here, 
you've got one times two to the power of x. Well, two to the power of x is just one. And one to the power of five is just one. So what I have here is one times one times one. So interestingly enough, our last term is simply one. Okay, so that's a little bit of a, a more difficult example. There's certainly more, compl more complex examples than this. Um, you, you, might, you might even see, you know, like a fraction as, a, as your final term. Uh, just it's really the exact same process, but just don't forget about any sort of algebraic or, or mathematical rules that you've studied up until this point, because they do still apply. All right, so that brings me to the end of this tutorial on Pascal's triangle and using Pascal's triangle to expand binomials. Uh, this was sort of an interlude. It's not necessarily directly connected to the sequences and series unit, uh, but it is definitely something that you're going to want to uh, make sure that you're familiar with, especially if you if you continue into uh, studies of combinatorics or data management. This will come up again.